Hey everybody, Yvonne here with Back to Earth Creations and I wanted to do just a quick little video with you guys um, about a project that I'm working on. I am using some Primo Sculpey in its black tone and I'm just setting it on a glazed ceramic tile here. The only reason why I have this trivet underneath it is so that when things wobble as they do on my uneven work surface it's not making like clunking noises but it's in no way uh, necessary. So what I wanted to kind of experiment, I have not used these. So um, there was this one of them I had opened and was putting into some nail polish, but I have not used these with polymer clay, which that is what I'm going to be working with here today. These pigments are linked down in the video description. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head what brand they are. It just says chameleon powder. These are not solar dust powders, um, which I know is a common brand that a lot of y'all have really recommended to me, but uh, this was actually gifted to us uh, by one of our viewers, so you know who you are. Thank you so much. <laughs> I just, I don't know if people want me naming them in the chat, so what I'm doing here is I'm just coming through. This is the Chameleon Powder Golden Green Plus Green Plus Yellow, um, and I'm just going to come in and do a little bit of a like I'm doing like a big swatch and so I'm just gonna come over the surface and I'm doing just a nice flat clay for this one and so I'm gonna try to keep them stacked by like color as well like kind of keep it in order if you hear wrestling that's we've just got uh, Millie and Z dog are practicing MMA fighting with each other and it is what it is. <laughs> this is the quietest they've been all day and I really really needed to get a tutorial shot. So um, okay so up that is now this is it on black as well but this is the golden green and yellow. So let's see what it looks like from different it's really subtle like from particular angles it makes it look like it's not even there. But then it has that really nice flash. And I bet if we did some imprinting, which let's see if we don't have a stamp or something that we could use for a little bit of texture. So here's one of my favorite stamps and I'm actually just going to come in and I'm going to position this off to the side and pressing down and lifting out. So that's going to give us a little bit of texture that we can um, pull this across the top of. So I'm just getting a little bit more on the like powder sponge and I actually think y'all I'm gonna put this on with a little brush that way it gets down into the crevices because I think that's where we're gonna start seeing some interesting color shifting is whenever it is on slopes and contours and stuff as well and to just see if there's a difference in application okay I'm gonna say I do prefer applying with a brush way more than a sponge so that's just me though like it doesn't it looks a little shinier it doesn't look quite so burnished and with one of these nylon bristle brushes there is like very little clinging of the pigment to the brush bristles man the lids are kind of hard to get on there we go sometimes all you have to do is just say something and it'll work but yeah so very little left in the bristles and so now we're going to move on to the golden orange and red or golden plus orange plus red i'm going to go ahead and cut into the top here fold that up and i'd like to get any pigment off of the top that i can so I'm actually going to pull that off the rest of the way. And now we can come in here and just use the top of the lid. So this is a way that you can catch just the highlights off of the surface of something that you're doing. So 
so there's that now this one's beautiful you guys let's see I'm gonna apply it with the brush first and then we're gonna do a little um, sponge segment as well just to see if there's any difference just for the sake now this one has a you can really see the different colors in it there's much more contrast and this might be one of my favorites you know out of the <laughs> I don't want to be jumping to conclusions but I do really really like it okay so there's that and then here's our sponge I'm going to use the other end to just get some on there and start burnishing it in. Yeah, doggy, I hear you. And so, I mean, having stamps and stuff it is nice, but you can always hand carve in a little bit of texture. You can actually sculpt into polymer clay to make your own texturing, like, rod um, using baked polymer clay. I actually think that's something we should do a video on, is how we can make some of our own I just like using my finger better than those sponges. I'm not going to lie to y'all. That gets a lot more of the pigment down as well. So much for being consistent for science's sake. <laughs> and I may do a separate video if you guys are interested. Just seeing how this suspends into resin. So there you can see the different color flashes. There we are. So we're going to get that capped back up and I'm keeping them kind of in order in the way that uh, we're using them. So again, we're going to cut this one open. This is the silver blue purple chameleon powder. Again, I am so sorry for all the doggy noises. This is... <laughs> So professional of us, I know, but here we are. Ooh, I love that. Okay. So coming in. This is really pretty. And I'm getting just a little bit of overlap in between them because um, of what we're going to be making with this clay that we're putting together. And so I'm gonna get in here. Oh, I guess I accidentally poked it with something. And then, there we go. And now let's put the cap back on that. And I am going to come in and I'm going to stamp down here as well. But first I want to show you the nice, ooh. And again, this is probably going to look very different with if you use different base colors of clay as well. But yeah, I'm going to come in here and I just want to stamp off the edge. And I'm just going to fill in this section. And this is the purple, red, orange. Just getting in here, cutting the lid off. I like that. That's very magenta y. <laughs> if that's a word. Okay, there's that. And I'm just going to fill in this whole spot, oops, with. I like how, even though it looks like a distinct glitter, um, it is applying like a mica powder. Like, I'm not seeing chunks of glitter, like large flakes or anything like that, which that makes me really happy. Because there's a time and a place for that, but for the most part, especially for mixing into resin and for trying to get that really nice color shift, I don't necessarily always want it um, a chunky glitter. And so we've burnished that in. 
this one's really pretty, the purple, orange, red. Let's see if we can see some different, you know, it just went on looking that purpley blue color, which I love. I just don't see any of the orange and red in it. Again, may look very different on top of, um, oh, what you call it? mixed into resin on top of different colors just things like that so what i'm going to do here on this little sheet of clay that we've made is with these hearts i want to come through and find a gradient that i enjoy so i'm just going to set that there like that and then we can actually use the same acrylic block that we have our stamp on and let's press that down and this is going to get us a really nice little, I love the tiny little bit of lip that is there between the bezel and the clay because the clay is just a little shorter than these bezels. Everything that I'm using will be linked down in the video description as well. That way if you um, you know, want to shop and see, you know, get similar stamps or bezels or different things like that, it's a great way to help support the channel at no additional cost to you because we are Amazon affiliates. Uh, so I just let you all know and so I'm gonna come in here and we can start at first just doing over here on this side and then I may choose a different shape for the other side so we're just gonna line that up and press it on down now I did I don't know if I mentioned this but I did roll this out on the thickest setting on the pasta machine And so if you wanted to make matching earrings or something, that's something you could totally do. I think I'm just going to make like little sister pendants though. It's been a long time since we've had puppy noises in the house. There's that. And then let's do one more. there's that and now let me dig out four more bezels I dug out a few more bezels now these are in a different style um, some of them have an offset loop so like this one how the loop is in the same dimension and this one is like perpendicular uh, that's okay I'm just going to keep that in mind whenever I do the smush with the thing. Ooh, I really like that spot right there. And now, before we smush these in also, we can totally test spot and be like, okay, we're going to do this one there, like that. Like, I really like that one in that location. We could do this one here in that location. Oh, that'd be cool. I like that. And then we can do this one here, catching three of the colors. So now that we have this positioned, we can just come in and press. But you'll see um, the offset over here is keeping us from pressing down all the way. So I'm just going to do these two. And now I'm going to come in and position my blocks so that we're not on the bales and we're going to push in and we can actually turn this onto its side and press in as well. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not hitting corners on any of the spots that are going to be like in the middle. Okay, so it's not quite letting us push down all the way right there. That's okay. We'll get this figured out. And so I had used up quite a bit of pigment. Um, actually, it didn't use very much at all, but um, I did use more than was necessary just for the sake of uh, demonstrating the colors. So now we can actually peel up the unused portions. And I do have a craft knife on hand with me just in case we didn't get a good cut through on some of these bezels. We can just clean up that edge even though the bezel may not have cut the clay through all of the way. And 
so again just cleaning up that one now I do have an oven my just regular cooking oven preheating to 275 you can use a toaster oven if you rather microwaves don't work don't even tr like I mean I guess you can try it just at your own risk um, it's not gonna it's not a good thing though don't put metal in the microwave and it doesn't cure polymer clay <laughs> So I guess if we ever have a microwave we want to completely destroy, uh, that would be an interesting video just to see what happens. Because I don't know why I'm like this, but it's not quite enough to tell me not to do something. I'm like, well, why not? <laughs> Which I'm sure was a lot of fun for my parents and every teacher I've ever had, but well, here we are. So there's that. We're just getting it tidied up. Now the designs that we've put on these, we can lay this on top of other like sheets of clay. And um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do a cut there. Well, that just broke off. But we can stretch this out and save that pigment. Um, you know, and kind of just get a second use out of it. So it's a little like weeding, you know, if you've done like a vinyl cutout or something. Now the rest of this we can actually leave just on the tile except for these two. We're going to have some problems with it being deeper here. Let me see if I can show you. That's going to make more sense than I'm not quite sure how to describe it. Now any smaller pieces I just go ahead and smush up together. So here you can see on the ones where the loop is in line with the rest like on the same plane as the rest of the bezel um, it pushes through to full contact whereas these ones over here you can see that that is elevating and so we weren't quite able to get in and get all, all of that clay so what we should have done is had it positioned to where that edge was hanging off the edge of our tile and that would have taken right care of that for us So again, I'm just going to come through, tidy up a little bit more. There we are. Moving that on through, lifting that up. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. Where the, there it is, a little ball of scrap clay. So again, just tidying up the backs of the bezels. And if them being lifted like that isn't what you're looking for, because for me, that's not what I'm looking for. I'd like to do, we could do resin on top of this, but we don't have to. I was just going to leave it. Oh, no. I stabbed it. <laughs> Whoopsie. Um, well, that sucks. I don't know. We'll see what we can do. might make it into a dud bin or something um, but what we can do but yeah I was thinking about just leaving them nice and matte I'm just gonna come through and I'm gonna slice up these two because I want to leave the other ones just connected there to the to the tile that way we don't get any distortion of the clay I want it making really nice good contact and so from here, I'm going to position this so that it is hanging off the edge of our tile. Same thing with this guy. And now we can come in and I'm just gonna line that up and press. There we 
there we go. And so that has made nice contact and we can clean up the back. Now an alternative route to getting to this end destination would be to just do the smushing with the black clay or epoxy sculpt or something like that. If you're using epoxy sculpt, oh I stabbed that one too, oh I'm getting messy. Um, if I were using epoxy sculpt, I would use a smooth silicone tile to do the designing on. That way it doesn't adhere. Or even just having a tile with one of those silicone cookie mats of whatever, you know, if you want a matte finish on the back, you could use a matte finished silicone mat. Okay. Just using the back edge of my craft knife to clean up all those edges and then we'll get to clean out the little holes for the bales there we are now I'm just going to zoom out so you can see what both of my hands are doing I just have my ball of scrap clay in my left hand oh <laughs> well, we're going to have all sorts of natural variation and little artist error marks and things like that. Okay, so I've just got that scrap off to the side. Um, I'm going to come in with, what are we going to use? A porcupine quill to just scoop out and remove that clay out of our bale hole. Now we can also sand this a little bit before um, or after baking. So just bloop, getting that out of there. Oh, hey doggy, what's up? She found the box that I used to cover my pasta machine. Okay, so we're just going to lift that up out of there. I'm really interested to see how these pigments look in resin. Like just being mixed and then poured. Which again, you'd want to do that with um, like a tape backing on these bezels. There we go. And cleaning up those edges. Are. very good and so now from here we do still have the option of we can put some little thin labradorite chips that have a beautiful flash but are difficult to wire wrap Look, that one's really pretty but yeah we could smush them in there and stuff but what we will do instead let me see if I can grab some stuff so something that we can do instead of adding stones, because that would kind of smush and distort a little bit, is here on these flat designs. This is a Gold Lux Mix Micas and Glitters. And I'm just going to take one of these Mica Flakes. And we can kind of just, woo, that's quite a bit. Um, we can kind of just take a pinch and sprinkle it in. I'm going to leave the lid off of that for now, and then I'm going to use this paintbrush to kind of place and position. and kind of tap any excess back into the uh, bin.
So I'm just going to tap it on to, once we get it how we like it, we can use the tip of the paintbrush to really press that mica pigment, or the glitter and mica flakes into our clay. And this is a great way to cover up if you are like me and accidentally um, stab it with your tools or your fingernails or whatever. You can come in and just cover it with something else and make it be like, yeah, I was totally planning that. <laughs> so. Of course, dog hair is always free. Okay. So now from here, I'm going to sweep this around and back into the container, or at least mostly. So I'm going to go put this into my oven at 275 for uh, 30 minutes, it's overkill, but it'll be good and baked through. And then I'll meet you guys here for the next step. So while our polymer clay is in the oven, I have here some just like silver and black that has been mixed together. And I'm going to, this is scrap clay from other projects by the way, but I'm gonna put that out on the thickest set setting on our pasta machine. And then we get to play this little game of patchwork where we can take our bits and pieces of clay that have this uh, pigment on there and we can kind of smush them in together have fun trying to match up the little bits with little pieces and I'm just gonna kind of cram everything in together and if my ends are too long and skinny to do much of anything with I like to take it and just roll it in trying to keep the pigment side up and then we're just going to smush that on there we can take this and press it up into that curve don't don't hesitate to uh really smush and distort and even break and tear some of the different parts of what we're doing and so we'll take this roll it in a bit we can smush that in right there. And now I'm gonna put this through the pasta machine, which is just right off to our left here. And I'm gonna put it in this way first, thickest setting still. And here you can see that is how that has distorted out. So now I have a second batch of clay that I'm just going to get conditioned. And so, just kind of smushing. I want to get it down to size to where I could put it in through the pasta machine. And just so y'all know, this right here is clay that has been sitting for about two years. And it was <laughs> decently old clay when I started with it. So um, sometimes it can just be a little stiffer. You might need to work with it a little bit. But old clay has always served me really well so I'm just going to press that down and now we can actually come through here and tear off little bits of if we want to cover up those other gray sections we can just tear off little bits of the clay that has the mica on it and boop 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 and now I'm going to feed this through the pasta machine this away first And now we have a really nice stretched piece and you can see especially how the stamping translated if I had only burnished the surface and hadn't gotten the pigment down into that stamping that design would have been much more prominent but so now from here we can come through and um, I was actually thinking about making a bunch of polymer clay pendants very much in this style here, using this as the base. 
but we may also uh, we could make some beads with this like um, you could you know get more of the bezels and place them and smush them and just kind of keep reusing your scrap clay you can reintegrate it into whatever it is that you're working on to finish these off, I'm going to be capping them in UV resin. Uh, this isn't quite the final, final step. Now they have been baked fully, and I am. this is a low odor UV resin. For years I was afraid of UV resin because like the smell was horrible, and they always came out like super tacky, like no matter how much I had it under the stinking lamp. Um, <laughs> oh, that's very off-putting. Um, and, but this stuff, works really well and I'm gonna go ahead and get my glove hand all messy just to clean the tip off um, but yeah I've been using this brand with no problems and honestly UV resins just changed a lot I guess like they've fine-tuned the formulas since like four three or four years ago when I used it last so I am just gonna come and oh my goodness y'all that comes to life when you dome on it so I'm just going to get a little bit of this UV resin because since we're not under a lamp and we're not outside, we should have, I mean, a decent working time with it. I just want to lay a little bit of the resin down. And UV res resin, especially if you're not bothering with a lamp or anything, is a great kind of Vaughn proof way of capping your pendants because you don't have to mix. You don't have to anything now. I mean, it is going to yellow over time, but I just work with colors that that's going to lend itself to. I do prefer to work with this outside because it says low odor. That does not mean no odor. So that's something to be mindful of. I'm going to get that cap back on there. And then I'm just going to use a little bamboo skewer to drag our resin across our baked clay because I want it making contact with all of the edges and anytime you use anything color shift it's going to come to life if you seal it in something dimensional like resin like a Mod Podge dimensional magic whether it's a UV resin or a two-part pop like you know you got to weigh and mix it or measure and mix it kind of stuff but I just want to I'd rather add not quite enough and have to drag it around than risk adding too much. I really like this moon. And the nice thing about these bezels is you can use them facing either way. There's no right side up. So if you'd rather have a left facing moon or a right facing moon, that's completely within your control. But here you can see our resin <laughs> leaked out onto the tile. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. We can actually glob up little bits of it and um, put it back onto our piece. I don't know if I just didn't make good contact or if I overflowed. I wasn't really paying attention to that piece, but this is a great way of locking our mica flakes and glitter into place as well which we could have, I guess, waited until after baking to add those, since I didn't make very good adhesion to start with, I guess, but this works just fine too. But I actually think I'd recommend the UV resin for anybody who's a beginner at working with resin, has access to a well-ventilated area um, just because these fumes can linger around in your home, and I don't know about y'all, but it gives me like a tremendous headache. Um, you know, so practice PPE. I've got vents and stuff going because I do lamp work in my craft studio, but if this were like my living room, I don't think I'd recommend working with, uh, I mean, working with this in the living room. <laughs> And I'm just going to try to drag this out quite thin because that's going to make it really easy for us to remove um, later. So 
I'm just coming through. Oh, my hand is in the way. I'm sorry, guys. But I was just coming through and kind of breaking that surface tension, dragging it out away from our piece a little bit. And so now I can actually take my gloves off and we're going to take the camera outside, find some sunshine. Okay, so we are outside and I've made the mistake of doing this in the evening. So most of my yard is actually in shade. So I'm going to come over here to this sunny spot on my sidewalk. Now we'd probably have had much better success doing this at high noon than, you know, now, but that is just fine. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wander around and see if I can't find a sunnier spot, like maybe in the backyard or something. Yes, I found a sunny spot over here. So you will want to make sure that there's no like bubbles or dog hairs or anything in your resin just because I like to not I mean you can sand and like refinish this stuff it is not my favorite you guys like I just want a one and done it okay and since we never delaminated these from the tile I can now turn this to catch the full ideal angle now you'll want to have set up just a little bit initially but now we can turn it like this, catch the full brunt of the sun. And look at those beautiful pigments, you guys. Just really come to life. And this is a great, great beginner project. So I'm actually going to set this here. I'm gonna prop it up with like a stick because I'm super, high tech and I'm gonna leave this here for like five minutes I don't know and then I'm gonna go check on my chickens actually and then uh, we will take this back inside and fin finish them into like finished pieces okie dokie so this would have worked better again if I had put them out at high noon as opposed to um, what time is it 7 p.m. So uh, just the stronger the UV lamp that you have or the UV rays that you're getting, the better uh, your UV resin is going to cure. So I'm just going to use a tissue blade to come through here and lift that off and you can see we've got a nice flat back. Ooh, it actually looks like the resin had leaked around to the back side as well or the clay is just that shiny. I'm not certain. And then to finish the edges, what we would do is, again, with the tissue blade, I'm going to scooch that off to the side. We can just come in and clean up those edges, whether we've got flashing or what. So, just cleaning up. Being real careful. Not putting a whole lot of force in it. It shouldn't take much force because if you apply force, you start pressing into the enameling of the um, bezel, and we don't want that. And so from here, you can see how clean that removed. Just hooking and scraping. And that is a very approachable, I think, a very approachable beginner friendly project. If you have, you know, if you're inclined to do more shopping than um, focusing on like, I don't know, how do I put this? You can spend five dollars on a spool of wire and focus on developing the skill to bring up to make like intricate pieces, whereas projects like this are higher priced on the front end, but don't require a whole lot of skill. I'm not saying that you can't develop skill or make them more complex and, you know, add your artisan flair to it, but with a, li with a little bit more, uh, you know, financial investment on the front end into the clay, the pigments, the resin, the bezels, um, <laughs> then you can really kind of go that route as well so um 
I don't think one is better than the other, it's just different routes to consider. And sometimes you want a project that comes together real easy that you can just be like chilling, you know, watching Netflix or YouTube or something. Um, and other projects you want them to consume your you know, consciousness and like distract from everything and just really help you focus in. So this project I think can go both routes. So you can, you know, maybe get just one color uh, of the pigment or something and then really like hand draw and like you don't need to have stamps you can you know make your own or do your own drawing and and then do the pigment on top of it like your your creativity is endless so don't underestimate yourself and have fun crafting now let's come through here and see how we would troubleshoot this piece here had a little bit of a bubble in it so you can see the Boop, right there I don't mind stuff like that it drives some folks crazy uh, you can take sandpaper make sure your resins completely cured but you can take sandpaper sand it down to get the bubble out and then redome it with more resin um, I just leave it like that and be like it's art this is what happened <laughs> so and if you overflowed your bezel it is not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and get this lifted off. I love these glazed tiles because they do delaminate really well and it gives us such a nice, that's kind of cool, um, background. You, easy as that, it just breaks off, you guys. So it might look like a major mess, but go ahead and just cure it as it is and then you can trim and shape down. There might still be a little bit of sticky on the back where the sun wasn't shining. That's okay. Once the front's completely cured, you can take them out back and or wherever. Because um, if you're in an apartment, you can do this just ne oh, next to a shiny window or sunny window. Shiny window. Um, and, uh, you know, cure your resin like that or out on your porch or in a parking lot. It does, you know. If there's a crafter, there is a way. So we've just popped out that little bit of excess. I mean, you can even use your fingernail, you guys. It does not take a whole lot to scrape off and clean up those edges. There we are. There's another little resin and polymer clay heart. Now here you can see um, the doming didn't quite go all the way over to the shoulder of the heart here, so we could fill that in with a little bit more UV resin. Whenever I do that, I recommend covering the whole surface again, that way you don't have a little uh, line in it. Um, I do hope that this is helpful to you guys. If y'all have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I love hearing from you guys. If you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as get some behind the scenes about what's going on over here and other future tutorials, uh, consider becoming a channel member. Uh, the join button is just right down by the subscribe button below the video player, or you can also uh, join our Happy Crafter Club uh, over on our website, backtoearthcreations.com, where we do uh, booty boxes and different things like that. So. Uh, again, if y'all have any questions about anything or if you need help troubleshooting and want to email us a picture, you can always contact us at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com or leave a comment down below. I know I learn a whole lot from you guys and the comment section can be a wealth of information if y'all share your experiences and your ideas and, you know, things that you like to do or things that you do differently or things that you'd recommend I try because I'm not the only one who reads those comments. Y'all can actually help each other so much and y'all are the backbone of our community here like you are our community it would just be me crafting lonely if it weren't for y'all here hanging out with us enjoying our videos and commenting and stuff so thank you guys so so much for helping us to make something that we could not have made on our own and that's the community here uh that being said i will see y'all next time so until then happy crafting Mwah! bye <laughs>